Ladies and gentlemen, this car has set a record for the highest price an Eagle Talon, otherwise known as a DSM, has ever went for. It's a world record and it just happened a few weeks ago. Let me tell you about it. Hello and thanks for slipping some time with me today. Many of you probably already know, many of you may have come to this video just because you've heard about it and some of you may be new to this, but this car a couple weeks ago on September 2nd of 2022, it hit a record price of an Eagle Talon, shattered the record actually, of an Eagle Talon ever sold in a public sale. Uh, I was very happy, very pleased with it and I'll tell you a little bit about the car and how, what it is and you probably already know a little bit that have watched my videos, but uh, yeah, this car hit a record and it was amazing to see that happen. Very pleased with that. Uh, the market determined the price. I didn't have control of it. Now, this car is pretty unique. I have videos about it that go into a lot of details. You can reference those in my channel as well. But for those that you aren't aware and haven't watched those or don't have time to, I will tell you a little bit of this car. So. This was a quest for what I considered a perfect Eel Talon, and it was a totally bolt, everything replaced, right from taking it all apart and then assembling it to be all brand new, hardware, everything. So I scoured parts from it, for it. Uh, it took me, I think for, I got this in 2008, um, got, didn't get to it for a couple years, but uh, it, it's at least 12 years of getting this together, but I had to look for parts everywhere. Um, there's some things that make this car special uh, that you'll never be able to make again. No one will ever be able to make a car this brand new, I guess, is a, a, a deal talent. And why I say that is because I had to work with Chrysler and Mitsubishi on where they sold warehouses of parts to try and find parts and eBay and all kinds of places over many years to find new parts. Now, things that you will never find out there unless somebody's got them in the garage and they haven't realized it. They got them and they're gonna find them someday and you might get lucky, but these moldings, which are always are damaged, all of them, uh, you can't buy these anymore. All the window moldings here and that, you, you just can't buy them. And these are brand new put on here. So this can never be replaced uh, or done again. So the new owner has got something that is very unique for 2022 and I think they did very well on it. And before you guys start thinking that, well, I've got an Eagle Talon, I can do that really quick and I can probably get a lot of money and make a lot of money. No, you can't. And, and, and I'll tell you why. This is, this is a, uh, I guess, a passion and a love for these cars to make this what it is. I sold it because I've got a number of DSMs around me, as you probably have seen in other videos and one right there even. Um, and I had to do something with kind of reducing the fleet. This one made sense for someone to appreciate it. And it is a show car pretty much or whatever they want to do with it. It could be a museum piece. But to make something like this, and I guess I'll tell you what the price was if you haven't looked it up yet. It's, it was 46,000 US dollars that this went for in the auction. Now, a lot of money. I'm not saying that isn't a lot of money, but a lot of money has been put into this car. And then I'll get to the time. So I don't know exactly how much money I got in this, and this is without inflation because I, I bought stuff over 10 years, we'll call it. This probably has anywhere from 20 to 30,000. Well, it's got well over 20,000. It's got probably closer to 30,000, might even have more than that, uh, US dollars into it already. So what does that leave us? Well, that leaves us $16,000 for all the labor put into this. I have a ton of labor in this. I if you go to the videos, you'll see how much I took things apart, I sandblasted them, I powder coated them, uh, I cleaned them, I, I replaced things obviously too. But the lay and, and putting it together took lots of time because I didn't want to scratch anything, I didn't want to hurt anything, uh, and I wanted to make sure everything was right with, and, and looked in its place too, and there's a little fabrication because there's some modifications. So I'm guessing I got maybe 1,500 hours into this thing. Now, if you think of 1,500 hours just in labor, if somebody got paid $10 an hour, that's $15,000. Well, you're not gonna find a shop 
because this is shop hours I did, not just my own labor. There's a shop here and a lot of work to, to, to building stuff and a lot of components and tools, etc., cetera, to, to put this all together. Shop rates can be, you know, a hundred, sometimes $200, right? So let's say it was a hundred dollars shop rate. So now you're looking at 1500 hours. Well, you do the math. This isn't a, I can make a lot more money doing work for what I, my former career was. So this isn't about making a ton of money. The market determines the value. I think, uh, I think I got a fair price because the market determined the price. This, the, the owner knows what this is. He's been a long time into these cars, probably from the beginning as well. I've talked to him briefly about it and uh, he wanted to get back into it because life got in the way and he got out of it for years and he wants something like this that's a gem and, and just can't be duplicated and ready to go. So that's why he bought it. And uh, uh, I'm sure if he sits on it, it'll probably be worth more. I, I'm, I'm sure it will be because they're just going to go up in value now that you'll never find them like this again. So for those of you that, you know, around the internet for saying, well, mine could be that worth that much or I may as well just buy one and fix it up and sell it for a lot of money. If you want something like this, you're not going to get a lot per hour for it. Trust me. But it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, I enjoyed it while I had it. I just got it done a few months ago, actually, and entered a car show. Uh, quite honestly, this is, for me, too nice to drive. And that's another reason why I'm selling it. I realized going to this level of a car, it's, it's, it's just, I'm scared to get a little stone chip, a little scratch, anything on it. A raindrop, I'm scared of. So I felt somebody else can have less anxiety with this car and do what they want and have the space for it if they just want it to sit there and, and look pretty or whatever they want to do. It's theirs to do whatever they want to do with it. And, and uh, I think it's going to a good home uh, as well and definitely someone who loves these cars. They would have to, to to pay that much money, obviously, right? So that's the story on uh, what's happened. So when I talk about you know, the, the window moldings and all that, unlikely anybody's going to make those again. I, I, I can't see it just because to, to make the, the tool set for that and to do it, there's probably not enough demand. Now, I could be wrong. There might be money to be made if people are willing to put the money, pay the money for it. Now, a lot of people, and that's why these cars are going up value if they actually look like this, is because a lot of people that had these cars that didn't have a lot of money or cared enough what they turned out to be as far as looks, that they really got wrecked. They really honestly got wrecked. Um, and I also got like OEM parts too. It's, and the, even the, the uh, weather stripping, it's all brand new that I was able to find and put in. Uh, and then on there obviously there's some custom work in there that you that make it look unique, but it also looks like it's factory and man, it's a beautiful car. So I guess to sum it up, I know if I was not having, I didn't have any of these cars and I was looking for one and, uh, you know, I had an established uh, company, career, whatever, I would definitely pay that and more because I know how much this is probably worth to get done and, and it can never be done again. So you would have something like this and you'd be at the top of the game to begin with that nobody else has. So that's to sum it up, I guess, why this is pretty... Uh, pretty fair I think the way the way it got sold um, so I, uh, I I'm sad it's going I mean there's a lot of labor of love in here I love these cars I just have too many of them and uh, I will be sad to see it go but it's a nice memory and I'll, I'll move on to other things and uh, we'll see what what happens with those so there you have it that's what happened world record uh, what's next is to get this off to the owner He's already paid for it, and we just got to get to him, and we'll, we'll see how that goes right away and get, to get it to them. Since this is so successful, and for those of you who have uh, watched my previous videos, you're going to know about a white 98 GSX Mitsubishi Eclipse that uh, is done almost to this level, we'll call it. I think what I'll do is uh, let's see what the public says about that one as far as the market and put that and bring a trailer as well. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to see more about that car, you can go back to, I might put it up here or go back and see my videos on that. And uh, I've got lots in store for the channel as well that are going to have DSMs. I've got, I know you know about this Lotus Esprit over here. And uh, upstairs here is 
up here, I mean. <laughs> There's a uh, Comet Mercury Comet GT that uh, I got to do some work on and uh, a few other surprises that are coming as well. So we'll get to that. Oh, and you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to go through my whole bring a trailer experience. I'm going to, I'm not going to try and make it just factual. So you guys can come to any opinion you want on whatever the facts are of going through the process. Uh, I don't want to make judgment, but I may make some recommendations, kind of maybe how bring a trailer could make the experience better, which I think they're open to. I think I've already commented on that, but overall, um, you, when you're the first time doing it, it is nerve wracking. I'll tell you that right away. The whole thing is pretty nerve wracking. Um, I did a unreserved bid and I'll, I'll tell you more about that in the next video of how that came to fruition. But, uh, that was pretty, um, some people say gutsy or whatever, but, um, I don't know, maybe it was insane. I think that word was used as well because who knows, maybe there wouldn't have been enough market out there and I would have taken a big hit on this and, and cried all the way. And it would have went to somebody who just trashed it because they didn't pay a lot for it. So there was that nerve wracking thing that going on, but, uh, it turned out really good. So I guess we'll call it a, it'll be a, a good story, but I just want to run through the facts with you and we'll go through a whole video on that, on how it all went and, and, uh, if there were any bumps in the road, if there weren't, uh, what went well, um, I, I, I'll, uh, again, I don't want to make judgments. I'll just say facts kind of in the timeline, how it all unfolded. And, uh, I may tell you a little bit how I was feeling, but, uh, I'm trying to just make it factual. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to see that and all this other stuff I talked about and more stuff. Um, we'll see what the white GSX does as well and bring a trailer. So lots more to come. So until then, enjoy every day and always make it right.